welcome friends to this afternoon session of our monthly meeting monthly satsangs i'm very glad to see you again i'm very glad to see sir very happy faces which means that you are you all had a good lunch <laughs> <laughs> there is food for thought and food for the body and there is food for the soul the food is different material food for the body intellectual food for the mind and love as the food for the soul soul only digests one food love if there no love soul is hungry if there is love soul is satisfied and we are souls we are neither mind nor body we need the food of love that is why it's such a nice experience when we experience love in our life no matter where it comes from love is not hidden somewhere when we are alive anywhere love is inside us we don't know how to express it we don't know how to feel it even sometimes we are so engrossed in very petty things trivial things of this life outside we forget the beauty of love lying inside us and that is why we feel so good when somebody loves us it is a spiritual need to love and be loved this is not a physical need a spiritual need we are hungry for it and we are missing it and that is what we feel what that missing of true love is what brings us to the spiritual path it's not what we think it is spiritual path that we just learn how to meditate and find out to go out of body is nothing out of body experiences mean nothing we have the memory night when we go to sleep we don't know where the body is we have dreams and we are somewhere else that's an out of body experience what's great about it just because we have it all the time every night therefore we don't take care of it it's the same experience if meditation gives you out of body experience means nothing but if you feel the power of love it means something no matter where whether you are here or you are in your true home or you are anywhere else it's love that matters love flows throughout we sometimes refer to these experiences that come at different levels of awareness as something independently sitting separately people describe the spiritual path physical level they draw picture also they said to be charts this is physical level astral level on top of it causal level material worlds then spiritual worlds there is the parabrahm beyond that then there is bhavar gufa the great cave such khand if you have more paper alak <laughs> akam anami eight stages some want to make 10 or 11 also nothing of the sort exists in reality nothing is above each other at all there no such thing as something happening above this universe nothing is happening outside above or below or any side of this universe that we are living in what is happening is within this universe the astral plane is within this universe the causal plane is within this universe parabrahm is within this universe but it's timeless and spaceless so we can't see it such khand is within this universe where are we now are we away from our true home or are we in the true home somebody asked me a question in 1962 when i first came into america he says if the, such a nice job we were doing having such a good time in our true home why did we come here i said we never came we never left he was shocked then what is this whole struggle about if we never left our home if we leave our home the whole universe will disappear it is being sustained by being in our true home what is happening is not 
moving from one place to another. What is happening is losing the awareness of where we are and having an external awareness over it. Such khand is right here, right where we are. And we can't see it because of the cover around it of individuation, that we are individuals, that we are souls, individual souls. A true home, we are only one, one soul. We have individuated ourselves for experiencing what is in the true home. Love is in the true home. Love is there, but not having love, not being loved. To have being loved means many, can't be one. So we become many. And becoming many, we shut off experience of the one. It's just the same place, not somewhere else. We want to have further experience. We create something and attach it to ourselves. Close the inner doors of our experience. Open up a world of time and space and mind and thoughts and a current sharif. It doesn't mean we're born anywhere. We hidden the awareness of inside and opened up the awareness what we added on for experience only. Then we make it a world further experience. Instead of having straight experience directly to us, we split it. Seeing becomes different from hearing. It was not different before that. In the causal plane, there is no difference. You can see with your ears and hear with your eyes. And at one point, the sound and the sight the light and the sound become one. It's just an experience. We added on more to separate them. Touch, taste, smell, they came separate. Power that sustains them is still the self in such kind. We're not moved anywhere. It's just outside of it. We move, move further, create a bigger space and time and create a physical world with the bodies. That's what the situation is. How can you draw a chart placing these things one above the other when the truth is it's all within yourself, more within yourself, more within yourself. That's a great beauty of this creation that we are creating experiences which are being created by consciousness just adding on more experience outward to itself and creating a thing called outwardness which is not their existence. So that is why the path to our true home is not going up somewhere. Path to a true home is going within yourself, more within yourself, more within yourself, till you are satisfied, completely satisfied. Then you know everything is one. Now supposing you come to know everything is one, it's just spread out for a show. And all these people that you see outside coming from there, what would you do? You love everybody. You are loving yourself. Can there be any hatred? No way. Can there be differences? The differences mean variety. Variety of experiences of your own self. That is why it's important to remember that don't go by these pictures. These pictures are for the mind. Mind loves pictures. If I say this is the truth, mind will say what is he talking about? I say, I can tell you stages 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That makes sense. You know, when I was a student in college, I was studying in government college in Ludhiana after partition had to come back from Pakistan area. And as a student late comer, I had a gap of a couple of years, uh, something new. They told me there will be election of a president of the college union, students union. And it's an important position because even the professors are afraid of a president of a college union. I said, I'll try for that. <laughs> and I said, how can I win? Nobody knows me. I'm a newcomer. So I used the trick which the mind loves. I prepared a list of 10 items and got them printed. 1,000 copies of it. I had only three friends of mine. One was a class. Person, one of the cousin. I divided them 300 each or something. I said, hold them. When I talk, give a talk for the campaigning for the president, when I raise my hand, throw these up. So as it happened, many candidates came. 
they were first class first in their degrees they had lot of accomplishments many were good sportsmen all more qualified than me and they gave their talk and one was short guy he said don't worry about my height <laughs> even napoleon was short <laughs> even gandhi was short and he quoted some names of big guys who were short in stature and people clapped and then another guy said i got so many marks in my exams i got this i am first in this he told his accomplishment i had graduated with a third division in my no second division in my bsc class so i was not qualified like them at the end all these candidates having described i had to speak i said do you want to elect the president based on the height or size of his hat or what or do you want to see what he will do for you i will do 10 things for you it is my hat and it swept the papers i got more votes than all of them combined <laughs> <laughs> i'm telling you the nature of the bind when the spiritual path is described as stages to go my love is it but that's the truth it's all within yourself just a covering up on yourself i'm wearing a jacket now i cannot say i've changed because i'm wearing a jacket but i do say i am not my soul because i'm wearing a mind like a jacket and i say i'm not even my soul and mind because i'm wearing sense perception as a jacket and i say i am neither of these i have to find these somewhere because i'm wearing a physical body these are like clothes we are wearing we don't want to take off all our clothes and be naked i mean that's not good <laughs> but we are we can become unaware of them and that's the whole secret of the spiritual path meditation is a way to confirm to us that we are what we are it doesn't change us it changes our attitude changes our way of looking at life it's the awareness brings us back where we were when we we'll go to our true home what will we feel oh thank god after a long time we have come will we say that not at all we were always there we woke up and finished all the dreams within dreams that we had that's how we will feel this is something very different so i am mentioning all these things to you that don't have those notions because those notions sometimes make us not realize what the next step is in meditation remember next step always in meditation is to go further within not anywhere else not higher up or somewhere in the very first stage you can fly anywhere you like in the second you can see everything that you created but that does not mean that something will be lying in those experiences the experience is a created thing for our enjoyment for having a thrill as it were not always enjoyment thrill i call it thrill because some ups and downs take place and we love the ups and we don't like the downs but we should have love both ups and downs that's a thrill for the thrill we are creating these experiences but the truth is none of these experiences not even such kind they are created from consciousness the experiencer is the reality not the experience no matter what it's always the experiencer the self the true experiencer is the reality and you will find ultimately there's only one experiencer whom we can ultimately call the ultimate god the creator of all experiences and where is he inside each one of us we look divided because we are looking through a mirror of space time if you go to a gallery they have put up 100 mirrors on the wall you look you see 100 of you it doesn't mean you become 100 we look 100 if the mirrors are different shaped all your body look different the different mirrors it doesn't mean they are all different they are your own self the curvature is creating the different images the curvature in space time is creating all of us differently otherwise source is only one this perfect living master spiritual path which i was able to learn from great master zur maharaj baba saavan singh takes you all the way back to the experiencer the ultimate experiencer i have not found anything better he told me search for something better than take it i have searched very seriously i searched in every possible way i met more masters than any one of you might have met 
but none of them could give me anything beyond. They couldn't even describe anything beyond what this master taught me. So that is why when I come and share these things with you, I am sharing them that this may be beneficial for you because you are seekers. You are seekers. And I am sharing experiences. I am not speaking from any book. If I had spoken from books, I would have kept some notes from there. I don't have any notes at all. And I don't know what I am going to say. I say what I can see from experience. Only experience speaks, not what one has read. If I had read something, I would say, maybe this book contains better knowledge, better get another one from the library. I would be talking differently. No, this is a practical thing for personal verification. You do not depend on somebody else's experience, on your own. If I say things that I have experienced, don't stop there and believe it. Say, you have said it, we will see when we also have the experience. No blind faith at all. This path is not meant for any kind of blind faith. It is meant for your personal experience. Whatever you experience, that is your experience. If the experience promises there can be something more, go forward. If it doesn't, you stop there. It is not something that you should be depending on somebody else. Should we depend on our master? I asked him one day. I said, Master, you are such a beautiful man. I saw you at a stage when you already had a white beard. I think a white, I loved your white beard. And when I was a baby, he carried me in his arms. And I could touch his white beard and his hair. Mm -hmm. They loved it. He would go and buy some burfi for me from the candy shop. And I would eat it for a long time. Take a little bites. It was so tasty. I still remember the taste after 80 years of that, almost. These are beautiful experiences. When I was grown up, I asked him. I said, I am feeling, I am beginning to depend on you for something. I always think of you when doing things. Is it good to be dependent on somebody? He said, not at all. Don't even depend on me. Depend on what is inside you. But Master, I love you. But do you know the truth? I am inside you. Outside is a reflection. Master is never outside. Even Master is inside and not outside. Go with them and check out. You will find I am inside, not outside. But still you can see inside, you will think I am outside. It's fine if you think you are, I am outside, but one day you will find out. That is why when you feel the presence of Master even when he is not there, you are not depending upon the Master outside, you are depending upon the Master inside. I told him, Master, whether you are outside or inside, I am still depending on you. And you keep on saying, don't depend on anybody. He says, what you think is a Master, whether outside or inside, is a reflection of your own true self. You will find there is no difference between the master and yourself. Only stages of experience. Eventually, we are our own masters. We don't know it. We have lost touch with our own self. So when we find out the truth, the truth will be that the whole thing is entirely within the self. Nothing outside. So it's nice to be able to know these things, that we are using yeah. these as crutches. Crutches to go within. They are nice crutches, worthwhile using. We have a love for the outside person because we are outside. We get our teaching from outside because we are outside. But when we are inside with those teachings, we find the truth was inside. Outside of the reflection of the truth, we go further. Ultimately, everything has been created from a single source, a single total self. Totality of consciousness is a secret. That's what we discover. And Till we discover that, certainly go through these phases, but never forget the truth. The truth is all inside, all the time. And you're not depending on anybody really. Whatever is happening, is happening because your truth wants to awaken yourself to your own true state. Right now you're sleeping in some states, and having dreams, dreams of these levels. When you wake up stage to stage, eventually you'll find there was only one dreamer, and that was 
a cell which all the people you ever met were created from the same cell. They are forms of the same cell and therefore the ultimate was oneness. Somebody came to me and said, you know, I have been listening to some very nice meditational music. And I have found a great discovery. I said, what did, what did you find? How did you play? She said, there are tapes available. You buy the tapes and you play. Very nice. Some seaside music, waves of the ocean, some trees and birds chirping. It's all meditational <coughs> music. I played. I said, it's very nice music. I find oneness now. I said, what does that mean? To find oneness. I find we are all one. I said, if I hit you over the face, will it still be you or yourself? <laughs> no, not then. <laughs> what kind of oneness is it that if a little action of mine can do this to you? That oneness is a mental concept we are trying to put in because we heard the word oneness. We hear these big words told by mystics to us. We apply them here. If we start applying them, they don't apply here. Here we are different. We are different. We are angry with people, we dislike some people, we love some people, we have so much accounting to do with each other. That's not because we are one or not one, that's because the system of creation of these levels of the mind, the causal, the astral and the physical level, they are created on a certain system and the system in order to run perfectly bases itself on action and reaction over time. Which means there is a law called law of karma. You do good, get rewarded. You do bad, get punished. But stay here. Don't go anywhere. You can't go to your true home through any kind of karma whatsoever. You can do all the good deeds in this life. Give all the charities that you can. But at the end you will get rewarded right here. You won't go anywhere else. This law of karma is what is creating all these situations here. Some people say we are going to do good deeds all our life. Then what will happen? They will get a good experience. Even maybe beyond this world, may go to a heaven, a astral plane, and say heaven for 30 years. And then, well then, the uh, rest of the karma will come in from a previous life. Then you become an ant. Or a spider. You know, people are very shocked sometimes when they hear the story of Lord Krishna, whom Indians worship as the in incarnation avatar of Lord Vishnu, the god of sustenance of this universe. That he he was born, Lord Krishna, with the wisdom of the gods. And his when his child is still young, as a cow herd, taking the cows out to graze. One of his friends, Udo, used to go with him. And this is a conversation between Krishna and Udo. He says, Udo, nobody can understand the law of karma. People do not know what law of karma is. It is the relentless law. It does not take you away from the law of karma by good deeds or bad deeds. Then an ant is crawling there. And he points to the ant. And he says, look Udo, this ant, little insect is crawling here at one time for Brahma, the creator of this universe. Which is also soul, became Brahma because of good deeds. And this very ant has at one time has been Indra, head of one of the heavens. By his earlier karma, he has become an ant. How do we remove this karma? Every time we think of doing something, and have an intention of doing something. Even if we don't do it, we create karma. Can you imagine how much karma we create in one lifetime? It would take 800 lifetimes for each one karma. Each day's karma would be so much. Where is it all stored? It can never be set up in one lifetime you pay off your karma. You can only pay off a little bit. Where is the rest of it? They have divided karma into the destiny you are born with, that's how you have to take life here. There has to be previous destiny to come here. Pralabd and Karaman, what you are creating now with your intentions and your actions. If your intention is there, one order of karma 
carry it out more hard karma it's all being recorded and kept where in your own mind mind carries karma mind is not dead when you die mind is not dead when the astral body dies it sustains the karma for millions of years and that's called sinchit karma reserve karma it is so huge for all of us that even if we try to be out of karma some people have found a way of uh, being out of karma I'll tell you if you want to follow that the uh, how to not to create any more karma i can tell you that people live that life the sinchit comes in and brings them back again so that is why we are the real trap in which we are caught in this negativity the sinchit karma the reserve karma that we can't get rid of the reserve karma the whole law of karma stays with us while we the, we are within this universe physical astral or cosmic so long as the mind is there it carries in chit karma if we can step above the mind karma finishes there is no karma on the soul at all ever karma is all in the mind so that is why these things happen there is a relentless karma and a very little modifications one can do by one effort one try to do good things to overcome the bad things and just gets more good rewards if one does not want to create any karma then you have to follow a rule which i heard expressed very strongly the first time i came to this country united states the words were go with the flow you must have heard those words go with the flow which means don't take any decision don't express any intention whatever happens around you go with the flow whatever circumstances tell you keep going the, with them you can't create a karma karma is created when you deliberately think should i do it or not do it should i do it or not do it when this deliberation takes place then only new karma is created if there is no deliberation just a reaction to what is happening you are paying off old karma and no new karma but even if you have no new karma sinchit karma comes in that is why the spiritual path according to me according to my master is to cross the mind if we saw all within the mind it's not a spiritual path describing it in indian terms used to call this brahm brahm brahma's creation brahman is creating this world it's all within this whether it's within the three world or the one just above lower part of parbara it's the higher part of parbara to such kind great master said my spiritual teaching starts above the mind from parbara from individuation to totality that's true spirituality remember these little facts make full advantage of your physical bodies i can tell you the human brain is best suited in this form on a human form because in this form you are ignorant what is going to happen in the future if you are not ignorant you could never be a seeker its ignorance is bliss yet you are ignorant what will happen and therefore you seek something and you seek with a feeling that you can seek you can decide and this feeling is called free will this free will whether it's real or not doesn't matter it's an experience an experience that you can decide that experience is called free will without free will you cannot be a seeker free will only exists in a human form all of us are living according to their instincts and pre-programmed destinies so that is why make good use of this wonderful tool you have of a human body i remember a man came to great master and he said master next time make me a human being so i can work he said what are you now a donkey right now you're a human being why do you want to wait for next life make full use of it right now and that is why i wish you all to put in your best efforts till your efforts fail and then you find out there's something more in this path than merely effort but the mind will not accept if you have put in no effort mind will say if i had put in effort i would have got it the mind will carry regrets mind will make you guilty don't do that let the mind win for the time being and make effort put in your best effort and get whatever you can with that effort you can get some part of it 
if you have got a great blessing called initiation by a perfect living master, there is nothing like it. I have not found any gift in any place anywhere in the world in any of the levels of creation greater than the gift of initiation from a perfect living master. Because guarantees, that guarantees you're going to go to home. He'll make you go through the process of putting in your effort, doing all these. Eventually he'll pull you up because he's guaranteed it. So that is why if you have that great opportunity, don't waste it. Make full use of it right now in this very life. You don't have to come back again. It's not the perfect place. Compare it with the other places. You will love those better than this place. That is why make good use of this opportunity. Very happy to see you again. And we'll see you next month again. And we'll have this monthly program going on. People say it's useful.